Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I hope everything is going well for you guys, and I hope you're ready for another breakdown of a string instrument. A couple weeks ago, we did the double bass. Today, we're going to be doing the cello, another part of the string instrument family, and we're going to be exploring some of the basics of it based off of what we learned in some previous videos. So let's get right into it. So I'll most Instruments in general usually fall into one category of voice, bass, tenor, alto, or soprano. The cello is actually sort of both a bass instrument and a tenor instrument. It plays in both ranges very well. Similar to the double bass, it also stands on an end pin while it is played. However, while the double bass is leaning on its player, the cello is sort of held between the player's knees and leans back on them that way. And because the cello has such a large range, it is also usually written out on two separate clefs, the major clefs of writing in sheet music, that being the bass clef and the treble clef. It is also sometimes written out on the alto clef, however, that is not as common as that clef is usually reserved for the violas. And the cello normally doesn't play in that specific range for extended periods of time. Looking at how it's tuned and some of its basic range, the cello is standard tuned from C, G, D, A on its four strings. Unlike the double bass, it does not commonly have extra strings. As we mentioned, the double bass can have five strings commonly. The cello only ever has four. It does not commonly have any extra strings or extensions to increase its range. This is partially because of the fact that the cello is already such a flexible instrument for both the low range and the high range of music, with a range that goes from the C two octaves below middle C to the F two octaves above middle C, or this range on your keyboard. The high range can even go a bit farther depending on the skill of the musician themselves. With string instruments such as the cello, bass, viola, violin, the higher the note is, it's not necessarily impossible to play, it's just extremely difficult to play accurately as the spaces between notes become smaller and smaller and even moving your finger a couple millimeters on the string will produce a incorrect or out of tune note. When writing for the cello in your music productions, here are some of the restrictions for it that you want to keep in mind and some of the playing techniques that you can use to make your orchestrations and your music sound a bit more orchestrally accurate. Of course, if you want to be creative and make sort of more hybrid style music, this of course doesn't apply. However, if you are looking to create more accurate orchestral productions, there are some things you want to keep in mind for each instrument. Due to the smaller size of the cello compared to the double bass, playing intervals of thirds and fourths are a lot easier to reach. On the double bass, it is not easy to play these intervals quickly. On the cello, you can actually play thirds, fourths, and depending on the player themselves, you can actually sometimes play fifths very, very quickly and without too much difficulty when working with professional musicians. This is mostly due to the fact that the entire hand can be utilized when playing the cello, whereas with the double bass you're limited using a couple fingers only. However, it is still more difficult to play larger intervals than it is with an instrument that is much smaller, such as the viola or the violin. So it is important to keep that limitation in mind. You can also play harmonics relatively easily on the cello compared to the double bass, such as touch fourths, as the player can also utilize the use of their thumb for increasing the range that their hand can access to. In terms of playing multiple stops, while it is easier to do on the cello and while it's actually feasible in the cello's mid to higher range, in the lower range, again, you wanna keep in mind that playing multiple stops can increase the amount of mud in your orchestration and it will also increase the distance between notes. So you might wanna restrict yourself to only using a double stops on a cello, triple stops in maybe the higher range. The cello is also an insanely popular instrument for its timbral quality and range. The characteristic of a cello makes it a favorite for solo performances. If you've never heard a solo cello played with the beauty and grace of a professional musician, then I highly recommend even just watching some videos on YouTube will give you a very good idea of what this instrument sounds like on its own. 
And playing the cello in solo performances is said to have a much warmer and just generally pleasing sound than a lot of other instruments in the same string family. This is partly due to each string on the cello having its own sort of characteristic tone, if you will. But the lowest string on the cello is your C, and that produces extremely rich bass tones. There's a lot of warmth to be found in this particular range coming from this instrument. Higher up in the third string, the G, you get a lot of power and strength. And this string actually carries a lot of weight into your piece. It carries a lot of mid-range power. And playing in this range will give you a lot of strength that you need if you're looking to do sort of an action sequence or something with the cello. Moving up into the D string, you actually get a very melodic section of the cello. It gets very lyrical, and, and a lot of people are gonna think I'm crazy because I'm starting to talk about instruments as they're alive, but when you start to play with these instruments and learn how to write for them, you'll learn that a lot of these instruments actually do feel like they write themselves in a lot of cases. And this particular range of the cello is very talkative, very warm, and very lyrical. Moving up into the last string of the cello, the A string, this is where it starts to become a little bit more piercing. This isn't necessarily a horrible sort of piercing screech. This is more like it stands out. It's very noticeable when this instrument is played in this range. It has a lot of character. And because it's the highest range of the cello, this, this particular string and range is used a lot for those solo melodic pieces we mentioned before. And they can actually use this range to pair very well with violas and double with the violas and write in a way that you can actually use the cello and the viola as the centerpiece of your composition. Even just listening to some of the notes in these ranges of this instrument can give you an idea of how these characteristics are interpreted and how they actually impart the soul of the instrument itself that was used to make that sound. Now, I know this has been a bit of a shorter video, but this really is just a quick breakdown for composers and orchestrators who write with these instruments on how to write more accurately if they want the music to sound like it is actually a realistic orchestra playing it. Unfortunately, we aren't giving like super detailed walkthroughs uh, that would be provided by music teachers that are actually like teaching how to play these instruments. But I hope you guys found this video informative and useful as always. I hope to see you guys next Wednesday. Enjoy your week, enjoy your weekend, and have a great one. Bye-bye.